Hey crew, kind of a double whammy today. I actually got a request from Mo uh, to build out two widgets for him and show him how to do it. So you guys all get to um, enjoy this and hopefully it's useful to you and hopefully uh, you can send him some good karma in the comments uh, below because this is only, it's only available for you guys because of Mo. So Mo wants to build out two widgets. First, um, this sort of infinity scroll repeating group and uh, next a sort of whoops where's the other one this feed this guy right here and Mo wants it to be square um, not basically with these um, these different uh, heights on his elements so those are two widgets that we can definitely build out and the other thing that was requested is that when they hover more information shows and then I assume you can click and go and go to another page or whatever but um, I also got as a third request how do you make it responsive and how do you fit it into an app so we got to make sure that it works on every screen and that it can work as a widget but that it's also part of a greater whole uh, and that you can build around those widgets and that's what we're going to be talking about today how exciting let's start with um, a slight uh, discussion about the current design I think that every design should start with a narrative and I'm very very uh, very happy about this that you used because your site is a listing website that you use multiple images that show movement and action um, and then you have your your thing here if I were to and this is a really great announcement I think because if I were to redesign it I spent a little bit of time playing with it and I would redo the same thing but with a little bit of an organic shape uh, around it which is uh, very trendy right now and uh, since this picture is going to be large I also added a few things to make loading easier and I removed your search button and, I'll, and, and I'm going to tell you why as it fits into the UX uh, in a second but uh, when I get 300 subs this will be my special my 300 sub special 200 sub special is coming up in like three subscribers I think and that'll be fun too but um, you really inspired me to, to, to make this and I'd like to share this with the community as well so triple whammy from Mo good karma comments below what I would do, uh, anything, all categories, postal code, what I would do is automate this process because as we get into a world of AI-driven UX, uh, we have to be able to give our customers what they want with as little friction as possible. That's always been Google's design philosophy and it's a very good one. And uh, the search button adds that extra layer. And with Bubble, we can actually know when these are filled out. So what I would suggest is I would add a listener to when these are all filled out and I would just automatically scroll to the next part of your app which, if we look at Airbnb, uh, instead of going to another page, uh, I would actually scroll down to recommended for you and I would preload recommended for you with uh, the actual um, places that you could stay at uh, instead of these uh, basically generic cities that uh, I'm not actually going to go to. So when you look at Airbnb, this, this is great. This is a full screen hero. Um, very difficult to do in Bubble, and that's going to be the 300 sub special. Um, how to make a full screen hero? It's it's right now ridiculously uh, ri difficult. But as you scroll down, um, you could see all of the different things that uh, this company offers, basically. And then a featured banner, which is cool, I guess, if you need one. And then you finally get into the core of what Airbnb offers. Okay, so for your for your app, what I would suggest from a UX perspective is to take find local opportunities with ease in the explainer for your app and I would actually put it below um, the thing that the customer searched for or wrap it in with the thing that the customer searched for. So you're offering opportunities, I would put a list of opportunities here. And the other thing that I noticed is that when, you're, when I'm designing, everything is about margins and I'm gonna explain to you why and how to uh, adjust it basically. When I design, uh, we really want this left margin to be consistent all the way through and this right margin to be consistent all the way through if it's not a full width element. So my hero here is full width and I make sure that the content below actually only starts showing up after the user scrolls past it. And the reason for that is because here my margins can start. And in most sites these days, if you zoom out, you'll notice that they do keep consistent margins on their uh, content part at least and they uh, use different sizes basically but it's it's usually all the same so I'm gonna give you three examples as soon as I can find the size here where can I find the size 
980. So for this site, it has a max width of 980 for their content part, and everything aligns at 980. And here, overflow, which was the other thing that you wanted to build, apart from this, which is a full screen element, um, the content itself aligns here in the center, and it aligns at 940. So Airbnb, very similar to make sure that all their stuff lines, they have uh, a little bit of a wider one. I think it's 1600 if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's 1600 here on Airbnb. And I think part of that has to do with the fact that they're very heavy on image and to maintain ratios, they must have calculated exactly what uh, it should look like for a really nifty, smooth design. I love Airbnb's design, how, how basically great it is so this is Airbnb and but all the sites basically uh, use the same thing they have either a full screen hero or a half screen hero and then they have their content section and all the margins in your content section should align so how do you do that how do you build out a content section that aligns so I had done a take of this and I deleted it I'm going to go into um, the first widget, first of all, the first widget we're going to be building out finally is this um, this scrollable menu here, and this is my take on it. Bas oh no! Well, we're going to have to edit it, and this is my take on it. And basically, uh, it allows you to scroll through. Uh, the different uh, team members that the company may have and find one immediately. So when you um, go ahead and let's remove my take on it. Let's go to index. No, let's go to header. And let's write clear. So this was sort of my take on it. Um, this this scrolling group, which is much the same as you're as you're trying to achieve, and you have this little arrow to basically scroll through the different elements, and then you would be able to click on one. So that that's what we're going to be building out as a first widget. Let's go ahead and. Uh, where is it? Sandbox. Let's go to Sandbox. And then here, um, this is how it's built out. Uh, and first, you're going to notice this large group right here. So why do I have this group right here? Basically, this is what I call a safety. Um, usually, I'll put it 20 pixels, sometimes 25, and I'll center it horizontally. Okay? So it's got a 20 pixel margin, and it's centered horizontally. I'm going to give this a color so we can see what's going on in the responsive engine. And basically, no matter how small the page gets, there's always a safety to make sure that none of your content spills over to the edges of the screen and looks bad or interferes with other navigation uh, things. And the rest of the time, it's allowed to expand until, like we said, a certain width. So Airbnb 1600, you can pick whatever width you want. I'm going to pick 1450 here because why not? And basically, once you get past that, um, it'll it'll just stay at that level and center itself on the screen. Okay, and this this construction method is one of the two most common ones. The other one, just to have a little chat about that one, is when you have a left menu. So let's center this horizontally, and let's say you have a sorry, let's say you have a menu that sits right here. Well, you're going to need some content on your page. So what they usually do is they'll put another group right here, and this one will contain the content. And then this one will, will have a max width, but both of them will be aligned to the left. And the reason for that is if you have a very, very wide screen, um, like a 4K screen, the, the white space is evenly distributed on either side, or in the case of this left one, um, is basically if I go max width 100, just so we could see, and this one max width 100, and then both of them are, are lined left. Basically, the white space will stay at the right side of the screen so that your user can actually adjust their browser window accordingly and not miss out on any of the content. So those are the two biggest ways uh, to build websites right now. And the way that I like to build is actually mobile first and then let it collapse into the group. So if I put this group here, uh, usually I'll build it 340, but I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as if you squeeze it, um, 
it, it all of your content fits. So you basically want to check that as you're building for responsive. But then I'll actually collapse the margins at uh, any width. So 4100, this one only goes to 1450. So any number higher than 1450 here will actually let it uh, collapse. We'll let the content collapse into uh, the full width available. So that's what we want. And then I can build from mobile to make sure that uh, anything that I build will actually be able to be seen on a screen that's got dimensions that are uh, common. So usually 340, you're safe to build a 340, and then um, you can put all of your content in a, in a group of 340. Some screens are 320. Uh, I mean, keep an eye on your analytics and do what you need to do for, for the type of customer that you have coming in but uh, usually I'm safe at 340 and then if it goes any smaller the content is still going to be available it's just not going to be as nice it's going to be squeezed a little bit okay so the widget we're building out here a little discussion um, I can't center stuff vertically in bubble without using code I have to use code if I want to center it vertically so we're not going to be centering these vertically and we're going to be trying to keep them um, basically all as a designer all the stuff that you put into them uh, you want to make sure that it stays within the blocks that are assigned and we're going to do it um, I guess so first with a repeating group and I have some data that I can load already so for testing you want to make sure that you have some data like maybe an image and some text and that'll be uh, basically good enough. Let's go ahead and set out our repeating group to uh, do a search for. These are lawyers. So let's load all of our lawyers. I think I have five. Uh, I always build my repeating group single cell and then I let them collapse out so that um, basically they fit in 340 and then they're allowed to go and, and collapse elsewhere. So I'm going to give it a background color to, to show you exactly what I mean. So let's go to responsive and you'll notice that uh, the content group, I shouldn't have left the content group white because I can't actually see what's going on. So let's change that to green. And the, the green will expand into the yellow at its full width. And then the blue actually follows because of its margins on the left and right here that are zero. They'll stay zero. And this will collapse and basically uh, give you as many cells as you could possibly need. Okay, so for our first, our first group, uh, we're actually going to build out the square ones that you asked for that were on feed and we're gonna build uh, a set of six square ones. Okay, here I told you, you could definitely build this, but it's hard to say about the, um, the, data, the, the data that you put inside of it uh, should be a fixed number because I actually only have five lawyers and this one will be missing, so we'll see how it works out. But, and then you asked me for some hover and then you asked me for some um, text as well that would show up. Uh, so right now we're going to have this group in the back uh, and this group fills up the entire cell and you don't have to worry about it because uh, the group will basically fit uh, and it'll be a safety here so we don't have to worry about adding margins inside and this group will have a background image and the image will be and since I have an image in my data I can go current cells lawyers headshot and it will uh, fill it up right here. Now you ask for square, so let's make sure it's square. We have a width of 340. Let's go a height of 340. And the other cool thing that I can do here is make sure that um, I, oh no, I can't do that with a group. So we'll leave the group here and we'll actually, um, we'll delete the image and I will use an actual image uh, item because the image item has a quality that I that I want here. And the quality being, uh, I can actually keep the element proportions as the page is resized. So that'll keep it square at all times. And basically, you know, as, as it goes, element proportions, if it's square, when you start building it, it'll stay square. And we're going to go parent groups thing, which currently doesn't have a type, which will be lawyers, data source, current cells, lawyers. Here, for those of you who are not familiar with repeating groups, I'm just passing up data. The repeating groups are going to load all of the data in the data tab, and I'm just passing it up to the from the blue repeating group to the parent group, and now to uh, this image group right here. So, yeah. It's actually better if I just remove this group and just put the image at the at the base level here. Whoops, at the base level of the repeating group, because I'm gonna put I'm gonna stack this group on top of it. So, anyways, dynamic data could be current cells, lawyers, headshot, and now runtime mode it could be a rescale, and that's fine. So let's put this group over top and let's bring it to front. Bring it to front, and what we're gonna do with this one is we're actually going to say. Um, 
this is a group, right? Yes, yeah, so let's say flat color and let's go with, so you could do white or you could do black and let's give it an opacity of 20 so we can see the picture below. And when we hover on it, we actually want uh, the color to get a little bit darker for this current, uh, just, just the UI that I'm thinking of right now. Okay, so you could do whatever you want with this, um, but basically when this group is hovered, I want, we're gonna call this group Hov group so we know which one it is and when it's hovered we want its background color to be a little bit darker so maybe some 40 and we're gonna go transitions background style let's go 300 second ease and let's preview that so basically I should be loading lawyers I forgot what kind of yeah it's probably still for, uh, horizontal scrolling yeah yeah so it's actually scrolling vertically through my, and, and all the images is square, but you can see that when I hover here, it actually darkens, which will be useful for us. Let's go back into the build here. I have too many tabs open. I will probably end up closing this one. I'll keep this one for later and that's all. Okay. So now I have a square group and I'm going to select it. I'm going to select the first parent, which is the repeating group. And instead of vertical scrolling, I'm going to pick full list. And then I'm going to say allow more than one column when stretched, which is only available if you only have one column. So that's why I built them single cell to make sure that when they expand, they can actually take up the full width and stay square. And basically, depending on the width that I have, I have a bunch of square, um, square uh, groups with images in them which is cool. So if I were to um, to want this group to basically uh, fill up the entire area, I have to use another element that I can keep proportions on. So I'll click on the hov group itself and I will put in an HTML element. And this is just to keep the element proportions as pages resized. And that's all. Normally I would put my text in here because I already have an HTML element, but we're not doing coding today. We're just using pure bubble elements. And next, what we're gonna do is grab text and we're gonna put it in here. And this is where it gets complex because we cannot actually center vertically. The best that we could do here is remove the style. And this one's going to contain the title, right? This text here. And we're actually going to not make it a child of Huff Group. We're going to put it behind Huff Group. Um, so let's go ahead and select. Uh, I should have named these. Let's go safety here. Let's go collapser. And then I should be able to get to RG from there. We're going to call this RG, repeating group. And inside we have Huff Group, which I'm going to hide. And then I'm going to take text and I'm going to put the text. Where's the text? I'm going to put the text back into the repeating group. So the text is the full width of the repeating group. We want to center it um, horizontally, easy to do. And we're going to go title of the thing. And instead of title of the thing, I should actually give it dynamic data since I can. We're just going to go current cells index to show a bit of a difference. But basically, you're going to load whatever text you want in here. Um, and next, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the line spacing is one because line spacing throws off the actual vertical centering. And then we're going to center the text vertically. And then we're going to pick whatever style we want for our title. Okay. Um, here, we're actually going to give it margins off the wall. So let's center that horizontally. I mean, there's 17 right now. I would actually try to keep it more or less um, even. But yeah, we're just going to leave it like that for now. And then we're going to give it FF because... Uh, our group, our masking group is a little bit darker. And the reason you add masking groups over images is to make sure that uh, you can actually see the text that you put in. So let's go for a load. There you go. So now we have a group and we have our little uh, text over top of it, but we can't have the text over top of it. Otherwise it doesn't darken. We have to actually throw our text behind it. So let's go Huff group and let's bring to front. No, that's not going to work. That was silly of me to say. Sent to back. Sent to back. Okay, so that was silly of me to say. Sorry. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go half group, and the text has to be in front because the text is white, and the half group is what's darker than the image, so I don't actually want it uh, in front of the text. Let's grab this. Um, HTML C I can hide. I don't need it anymore. It's just for proportions. But you did notice that the the black actually touches the bottom. HTML C is inside the half group, and so the half group is now always the same size as the picture. Let's go ahead and um, do, 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 grab HTML, 
C, where is it? Oh, it's inside Huff Group, obviously, and let's hide it because I don't want to deal with it anymore. And now Huff Group has to have another condition saying Huff, this group is hovered or text um, title of things is hovered. Okay? Now we're going to be able to hover text. And as you know, I don't know if you noticed, but it's not exactly centered. It's a little bit low, but because uh, the lines are kept, we don't actually care and it looks good. Okay, so we got title of things, we got a margin, and now we can actually start putting in another text. Uh, and this text is going to sit inside of the Hub group. So you, you have to make sure that it's uh, inside of the Hub group. And we're going to give it a similar margin, center it horizontally. We're going to align it center. We're going to remove this style here, align it center, make sure that the line spacing is one again, and let's center the text vertically. And now we can put whatever explainer text that you want in here. So parent groups, lawyers, text. And now this will explain your category and such. And we're going to say when half group is hovered or uh, thing is hovered, we're going to copy this condition. And in the text, we're going to paste this condition right here. And we're going to say font color is going to be white. And we're going to go transitions. We're going to go transition for the font color. We're going to keep it consistent with a nice 300 appearance. We're going to grab this font color and we're going to bring it all the way down. Okay. Next, uh, we're going to give it a bit of size, I think, 18 or something. It doesn't really matter. I'll let you figure out your UI uh, from that perspective and what looks better for you. And then here, we're going to select the actual text that's the title and we're going to we're going to do the same thing here paste the conditional in and say blah 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 font color is nothing so fully transparent and transitions is um, font color 300 and ease so as long as you keep those consistent we should get a nice enough uh, look I'm going to delete this group and bring this one in because it's annoying for my text my testing there you go so we actually managed to pull the text as you noticed the vertical alignment is really bad really really bad here and uh, we're not super happy about that but what are we going to do um, the actual stuff does appear uh, and the actual text um, basically appears on hover and then you can click and go to some place right so that's the the next thing here hov group let's go start edit workflow and let's go go to page and then let's just select this page uh, sandbox there you go and just to t for testing purposes, we're going to add a P. We're going to say P equals get data from page URLs P. Let's, let's get a number plus one so that we can test that it's actually working. And the next thing we want to do is, as you notice when I, oh yeah, I said I would delete that group. But as you noticed, um, no way. So we have to actually put this on the text that's that's there because it's still visible and what when I selected like this you can actually see that the text is selectable even though it's faded out so what we have to do is unfortunately say thing and there's a few ways around this um, I would say I would love to because there's a transition I would love to uh, hide the text after 300 seconds and we can definitely do that on hover but it's a little bit more complex and a little bit um, yeah, it's a little bit more complex and I don't think that it's actually going to look good. So let's go text and nothing. And I think if we do this, it'll just disappear very fast, but then the other text will actually appear a little bit. Um, whoops, I put, I put the conditional on the wrong one. Let's copy this condition, remove it, and let's select the actual text that's behind Hub Group, the title text. And let's go ahead and remove the text when the thing is hovered. And also we wanted to put um, the, the navigation workflow on this one. Go to page and sandbox. And I'm actually just going to copy this. Paste it in here. It's nice to have on both because it doesn't cost you anything. And it makes sure that uh, the user can actually click on the outside of the box, which is frictionless. So yeah, there it is. And it disappears faster, and the other text appears, but it's no longer selectable. So that's exactly what we wanted. Good stuff. And then I could go p equals 1, p equals 2, and that's working. Perfect. Next, I would calculate if I wanted... Um, I'm just trying to figure out how to make it max of six things. I would actually probably 
load up to different repeating groups and say items until three, but then the responsiveness of it wouldn't actually work out the way that we wanted. Like this, this is perfect right here because you load six. So what we could do is apply a max width. This is also perfect because you load two and two and two, and then you're eventually gonna load just the one and uh, it's going to be rather big. But this, this will actually look good on mobile. The problem on mobile is that you can't have um, the text showing up on hover because you can't hover on mobile, right? So that's annoying. Okay, so how are we gonna do this, guys? I think we're gonna go and we're gonna say, we're gonna apply a max width to the actual repeating group itself, and we're gonna find out where that width is. So when do they load at three? And unfortunately, you can't do that in your responsive editor, so we're gonna do it in here and remove our margins, which are 20 each. And that seems to happen right here. This is the breakpoint that allows us to go out further. Oh yeah, for those of you who don't know, I, I don't know if I talked about this, but you, you control shift M in Firefox. I forgot, I think it's control shift J in Chrome uh, to get this uh, responsive editor. And then you can actually get these right here. So I think the max width we're gonna go with is 1400 because at 1400, it seems to, uh, it's at exactly 1400, it snaps over. Um, so we're gonna go repeating group. Let's go responsive tab. Let's select the actual repeating group Let's add a max width and let's play with this until we get to what did we say 1400? So right now it's 340 and that'll be roughly what? 400% uh, Almost what is it 420% No 410% and now I play the guessing game. So I'll, I'll leave it at 410% because we'll Is that accurate? No, it's not accurate. I forgot to remove the margins. So 400 and it actually goes a little bit too big. So we're gonna bring it down to 400%. Uh, what is it supposed to be? Hard to do math, you know? So 20, 20, that's minus 40. So 1400 minus 40 is 1360. And is that what we have here? 1360 exactly. How serendipitous. So now it should never actually go bigger than the actual six that you wanted and of course I'm lying why 1360 does so let's bring it down a percent or two and test that out the only problem with this is that it's actually going to stay at six but uh, the actual margins for the rest of your content you might have trouble doing it so anyways if I were to be doing this I would play around with it and I would make sure that um, everything fits and I would spend a little bit more time on it but now you have the basics of how you can build out this exact group um, with six little things that when you hover over you can click on and they'll take you to another page or another location in your site I'm, re I re I'm really sorry about the text um, there's no way to align it without code uh, to the center. So play around with it and find the best scenario that you can. Uh, this is close, I would say. Uh, maybe it's even close enough, but uh, yeah, you'll get your six here and they'll actually keep looking good the whole way through because you either have three or two or one, right? So it'll look good the whole way through as long as it doesn't get wider than that. Okay, and there's a lot of applications for this. And now we're going to do the next kind of group with the similar, uh, we're just gonna keep this uh, repeating group and build it out the exact same way. But instead of full list, we're gonna use horizontal scrolling. Okay, what does that do and what does that imply? This is this one right here, the overflow one um, that, that you can't see right now because it's so small. The overflow one that loads different ones and then you can click on next to load the next one. And you'll notice that here we have a gradient over top of it and here we have a gradient over top of it. They did a really cool job about making this clickable through that. Uh, without code you can't. Um, and I'm not going to, again, use code in this codeless tutorial. So uh, you won't be able to click on the one that's underneath the gradient, but it'll look exactly like this, okay? So let's go into here, and now we have horizontal scrolling, and like I said, what does that mean for us? Let's load it, I'm gonna make this full width again, and here you go. So they all load in one column, okay? And as you scroll, um, actually more of them will show and the first thing that I want to that I want to do is actually go to the forums and give a huge shout out to shot for building this stuff uh, shot horizontal scrolling 
groups. And I know that I said I wouldn't use code, but this is actually that actually breaks UX. So if you find this right here, link in the description, and you scroll down, Shot actually wrote a little script for us that will loop through and show without actually scrolling the repeating group. Um, and basically what it does is it loads everything that's visible on the page. So you're gonna need an HTML element right here. Okay, next you're gonna need to go to settings and you need to go to general and right here under your favicon there's expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. You're gonna select that. You're gonna go into here and you're gonna paste in the code that Shot gave us. Here there's hashtag and then repeating group uh, ID. You're gonna click on repeating group ID and on the repeating group itself, sorry, RG, and you're going to give it an ID attribute. I'm just gonna name mine RG. It could be whatever it is as long as it's unique on the page. You click here, you scroll up, and you change um, the, the, the ID of the repeating group, making sure that you keep the single quote, the hashtag, and the other single quote, and then it should work. Watch as I load, and it actually scrolls through all of the available elements and loads them all on the screen as long as they're visible. Wonderful. And then you can scroll to the right, and as you start scrolling, more will load okay shift scroll and on uh, Firefox doesn't do it but Chrome will actually let you click and drag with your mouse to check it as if you were using a touch enabled device whether it be your laptop uh, that's touch or your phone the other thing to note is that we actually get a scroll bar on the bottom and again that's something that's subject to coding if you want to remove the scroll bar make it transparent or even invisible you totally can do that um, but it's not it's not part of what I'll be talking about today. What I'll be talking about today is just take it and drag it down, uh, take your repeating group and drag it down the amount that you need to to make sure that you have room for the scroll bar. I don't know if it's 20 pixels or 10 pixels and it depends on the browser, so you're gonna wanna learn to eventually style your um, scroll bars, but I'm not doing that today. So let's go with 20 pixels and it should be good. I'm using Ubuntu, so it's got a thinner scroll bar, I think, than um, Firefox on Ubuntu has a thinner scroll bar, I think, than Chrome um, on Windows. I don't know what Safari's is. Okay, so now we have our things loaded again, and we have a, uh, a scroll bar. And the question was, can I make these things disappear? And it's very finicky, so I hope it works on the first try. But because bubbles are lined in our boxes, um, basically allow us to, we can stick this here and as long as it aligns right it should stay visible so let's go ahead and use one for the left and one for the right and then let's align it to the top making sure that it's not a child of the element but making sure that it's exactly the right height the same height as the element so my element right now is uh, 340 so is it, was that width yeah that was with this 360 so let's make sure it's exactly the same height and let's make sure it's at I think it, we're at 80 let's put everything on 80 we were actually at 79 but and then this one here 360 and put it at 80 so if you line everything bubble puts an R box and a, around this content right here to align it and you'll notice that automatically because we touched them to the lefts and to the rights they'll just show up like this. We can remove fixed width, but we can apply max width um, because we do want them to expand when the page is bigger. Uh, we're gonna give them, I think 200% should be good enough uh, on either side. So we're gonna do that on both of them, 200%, which will give us 106. Apparently I didn't check the widths, but whatever, for now. And then I'm going to add two little icons. Uh, I'm gonna use the actual icons, use feather or material design or whatever you want, but right now this is the easiest for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna type an arrow and I'm gonna go left. That is totally not left, left. And then I'm gonna grab this one and put it right here and center it vertically and center it horizontally. And I forgot to center this one horizontally. Actually, we don't want it centered horizontally. We want it almost touching. Yeah, I forgot because we're gonna add a gradient and if it's not almost touching, we're gonna run into some issues. This is actually the icon that I want, but it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna apply a gradient here and we're gonna go linear, we're gonna go left and we're gonna apply white at the end and we're gonna go with a very 
almost non-existent shade of white over here. And the intermediate color, we can pick white and pick 80, just so that the gradient um, basically darkens a little bit faster. And then we can do the same thing on this side. I don't know why. Uh, linear, and then you go left, and then you go white, and you go white, but like maybe 15. What am I using here? Seven. Seven. It should actually be zero, but I don't know if I have enough room to make it uh, fade in fast enough when it's at zero. Okay, and let's preview it. And as requested, now these guys should basically fade behind um, a little bit of whiteness, right? Exactly. Good stuff. Now for another limitation, and then for me trying something new. I think this video has gone on for quite a while. Uh, 35 minutes, that's not actually that bad especially for the, all the talking that I've been doing. Um, and why why didn't Shot's thing work anymore? That's new, it was working on mine. Did it just not run or? Hmm, anyways, we're gonna have to fix that later. Oh, we have to uh, basically, when we click on here, go right, and when we click on here, go left. So the limitations, as far as I'm aware, is that um, if we use the method that I'm about to show you, it's not going to work always because it works until the user actually uses the scroll bar. So what you could do is hide the scroll bar and only give them control, basically building a slider out of this. That's CSS, so you're going to have to do that. Um, there's some good posts. I think I might link a post in the description. Um, I've done it, uh, and I think Boston was the one who brought it up. Uh, but this this is the way that you would do this if you were using indexes. So let's add a new index here and it'll be a number and basically this will be the one that's showing so let's start with a default value of one. Okay? Oh yeah, I remember why. Okay. It's because... Yeah, no, that's fine. So when we start at one, um, basically this is going to be the one that's showing and then when we move through the index, either upwards or downwards, we can actually um, show the next one. So we can set state of RG's index to be RG's index plus one, right here. And then we can go ahead and change the RG of index to be RG's index minus one on the left. And then here we can say element actions uh, repeating group and scroll to entry animate the scrolling the RG entry to scroll to is actually RG's list of lawyers item number and then we're just gonna pull the index from RG and scroll to that one so let's go ahead and copy this and let's go ahead and paste it into group A I should have named these as well but basically what we're doing is we're adding to the index and then scrolling to the to that entry in the group and then we need two conditionals saying when RG's index is one then this element no this is on sandbox for some reason sorry for group B the, the arrow to the left we can say when paste expression I'm losing it okay <laughs> when RG's index is one we can say this element is not visible and here we want to hide it when it's the last item when RG's index is RG's list of lawyers count then the element is invisible so let's go preview and that should actually work out of the box um, so right now RG's index is one this guy's hidden I mean th yeah the guy on the left is hidden when I click here we're actually gonna scroll to two and then we're gonna scroll to three and then we're gonna scroll to four and I'm out of options is there anything that I have more of right now Okay, let's load a bunch of empty ones with just uh, nothing. Yeah, let's load a bunch of empty ones. Got it. Just so we can test. I mean, you'll be putting data in here, but... Okay, so now we should have more to play with. There you go. 10, 11... And that should be the end. Okay, so unfortunately, one thing I hadn't thought of, this guy, yeah, so we have to stop at thing eight, but we won't know because we have to count the number of uh, cells on our RG. There are plugins that do this, 
but I don't know if you I'm definitely not going to be using plugins. What I would do is I would actually calculate the width of this using, I would use JavaScript, I would calculate the width of this, I would divide it by the width of a single cell and I would count how many there are and then I would set this up too. Uh, and I mean, if you, wanna, if you wanna try doing that, be my guest. Otherwise, we can keep less than perfect UI. I don't think anybody's gonna really, you know, on an MVP before you have a few thousand users, I don't think it's a big deal if the arrow stays and there's nothing to scroll to anymore. Okay, so you have to make that decision. Um, and if you want to learn how to use JavaScript, go ahead and then you can actually calculate the number of cells showing and then stop it when it is that number minus the number that's showing. Okay, otherwise, this is basically what you had asked for. And I think that we are done the tutorial. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope uh, you learned how to do stuff from it and uh, Just one last One last concern. I don't know. I don't know if I understood correctly why you were asking me if uh, Or how to basically tie the app together. I hope I answered that question basically when you um, Basically when you're at this point uh, you just stack your widgets together and then you have an app <laughs> and then when you're at this point uh, you stack your widgets together just the same and then you have an app so if you build out your, your your front page like this and then you put your next widget here and then your next widget here at the end of it you'll have an app if that didn't answer your question just uh, direct message me and uh, we'll have a chat about it otherwise uh, thanks so much for, for requesting this tutorial on how to build these things. I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people. And uh, yeah, you guys, like I said at the beginning of the video, good karma in the comments for Mo who, uh, who brought us this bit of video today. Cheers.